Alexa, send me the specs for the 2022 Ionic 5 Hyundai. In 2022, salt, sodium carbonate, ammonium chloride, cesium hydrogen sulfate, halide MgL collagen NM and halide MgL 30607 are ionic compound. Alexa, do you have the specs for the 2022 Ionic 5 by Hyundai? Are you trying to shop for specs for the 2022 Ionic 5 by Hyundai? Yes. For specs for the 2022 Ionic 5 by Hyundai, the closest I could find is a Miss American Flag Outdoor Face Mask Multifunctional Seamless Microfiber America Headwear. Three pack. It's eight dollars and ninety nine cents with delivery by February twenty first. You can say bye. Alexa, one last time. Send me the spec. Something I found on the web, according to Wikipedia.org. One last time is a song recorded by American singer Ariana Grande for her second studio <laughs> album, My Everything. Water's formula is H two O and it is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Alexa, what are the specs for the 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5? Here's something I found on the web. According to TheVerge.com, the Ionic 5 is said to have nearly 300 miles of range on a single charge and a two-way charging feature that Hyundai calls vehicle to load, which can supply up to 3.6 kilowatts of power. Nice. Thanks, Alex. Hey, this is Rob Caputo. I'm here with my brother, Dave. Say hey, Dave. Hello. <laughs> and we're uh, we're actually on our way to a Hyundai dealership. Is it Hyundai or Hyundai? In America, I think that we call it Hyundai, but in other countries, I, I found it's out Hyundai. that they Hyundai. Or... All right, so if I say Hyundai, it's only because I've been saying Hyundai for the last 40 years. <laughs> and, you know, the very first Hyundai I remember, actually, was a neighbor of ours. I think it was 1986, 87. A neighbor of ours had a Hyundai Excel. I think it was an Excel, one of their very wow. first ones. And they, I, the only thing I actually remember is the thing rusting out after like a year or two. It's just amazing <laughs> to me. I mean, the windshield wipers I think were completely rusted after one year of use. But you know what? I mean, in 40 years, this company has grown to be like a really an exemplary company. I mean, like it's unbelievable that the quality of cars that they they um, they pump out. I mean, and honestly, I think the car that we're gonna look at today, which is a 2002 Ionic 5, is probably one of the one of the better electric vehicles out there. I mean, in terms of options, styling, everything. And I've seen a lot of different, and I know you have, Dave, too. Yeah. Seen a lot of different uh, videos on this thing. I honestly have not seen one negative comment made about this car, not one. I mean, maybe some people are like a little confused about the styling and stuff like that, but honestly, I like it. I like the way it looks. I like the way um, the, the, the styling's all set up. It's a little retro, kind of reminds me of a little bit of an 80s video game feel, uh, which is pretty cool. So anyway, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but I think what put them on the map, and correct me if I'm wrong, what you think, is the 100,000 mile warranty that they pumped out. And I, I don't know if that was the early 90s or, or the 2000s. Right. But I yeah. think when Hyundai did that, that really put them on the map. Because I don't think any other car manufacturer was actually pumping out 100,000 mile warranties on brand new vehicles. I think that would be very rare. Um, so you had an inexpensive car, probably in the 20, mid-20s range, and they're giving you 
a warranty that's 100,000 miles, it's almost a no-brainer. So I can understand why so many people went out and, and sought out these cars. You know, they're inexpensive, they're good commuter cars, they're reliable enough where, you know, they'll give you a 100,000 mile warranty. And if there was a problem like there was in I think the later Santa Fe's or something with the engines, they replaced all the engines. If you knew about the warranty, you'd bring it in and they would honor the warrant the warranty and, and replace the entire engine so uh, anyway uh, we're on our way to, to Hyundai right now uh, Dave you've you've done a little research on this car and, and in terms of like you know the power and, and all that kind of stuff in the range you know that a little bit better than I do so I know I I, I pumped out some specs here but you know, it's probably better to just talk about it real quick so sure. tell us a little bit about the range and, and everything about that car so, so I, I believe they're gonna offer different battery sizes I, in America right now they're offering the, the largest battery size currently available which is 77.4 kilowatt I believe mm -hmm. and that'll give you with a rear wheel drive model that'll give you a 303 mile range you know EPA estimated okay and if you get the all-wheel drive, it's a little bit lower. It's like 258, I believe, EPA estimated. Mm -hmm. um, and with the, you get a little more power as well with the uh, all-wheel drive. So you will get better zero it's to like six three hundred. Three hundred horsepower? Is that? I think what it it's is? close to three hundred if you get the all-wheel drive. It's probably closer to two hundred when you get the rear-wheel drive, maybe a hundred and something. Okay. All right. Yeah, I see. Okay, rear-wheel drive configuration can generate. 225 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque and then 320 horse and 446 foot-pounds of wow. torque wow that's, that's pretty impressive torque, actually yeah. that's where the power's going I think I test drove a Porsche recently and it, it had less horsepower and torque than that <laughs> but yeah absolutely and zero to 60 in five seconds for the all-wheel drive with the all-wheel drive yeah. that's impressive there are some things that maybe that may be impressive in terms of what they offer that maybe like other car companies might not, like mm -hmm. Tesla, for example. Because Tesla is a very good company and, and they're, you know, kind of leading the market. But uh, I was very impressed to see some of the things that uh, Hyundai is offering in terms of electric vehicles as well. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the, the competitors are, well, the Tesla Y is probably a competitor, but honestly, it's probably on a different level. You know, I mean, you're talking big bucks. Right. Um, the Mach-E, the Ford Mach-E is a competitor. Right. Um, the Volkswagen ID4, right. I would say is a competitor. Um, I don't know of any other cars in that kind of realm. I'm sure there's others. In the price range, that's probably the best you're going to, the closest you're going to get. The Tesla is probably a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but that's probably comparable in terms of utility. I think the Tesla has a little more capacity in terms of uh, cargo space volume. Right. But, uh, I think the Hyundai, considering the one benefit is you can still, because they still haven't produced 200,000 electric vehicles yet, you can still get the full federal rebate. And how is, much is that? That's $7,500 in, in the United States, which is, okay. which is a really big ben benefit because that could drop a $40,000 car, easily bring it into the $30,000 range. It's just attainable, it's affordable, yeah. and the, the range is, is pretty much in the same range as like a small utility vehicle. I would say, I mean, right. I mean, it's not 400 it's miles, close. but it's close. It's, it's like getting to the point where it's almost a no-brainer. Yeah, it's getting there. So, yeah, absolutely. So we're excited to go out there and check this out. And it's in Sussex, New Jersey, at Franklin, 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 Sussex. Sussex. Sunday. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you in a little bit. This is talking with cars. Hey guys, we're inside of the Ionic 5. Uh, we just took it uh, away from the dealer and uh, they trusted us to, uh, to take the car out and try this thing out. And so far, I'm having a blast with this thing. I mean, this thing is pretty intense. I'm gonna show you the dashboard. There we go. And, uh, and how this is laid out. Um, I'm gonna start the car. And the first time I started this car, I did not even know it was on. It was pretty pretty intense. There's two 12-inch screens, right, Dave, on this? Two 12-inch. Two 12-inch screens. Um, they're very crisp, very easy to read, very quick to use. I know when I was playing around with this a, yes. a little bit, it was, it was pretty intense. Uh, how do you get back home? 
seems to it moves really really yeah, smoothly like a phone that has a pretty good processor it seems to be pretty smooth mm -hmm. what type of apps are on there so it looks like there's a map okay, right. EV. navigation phone setup voice memo valet mode EV what's the EV mode for uh, right up here Oh, okay. So it kind of tells you where you're at, battery power. Um, if you leave your AC on, you got 226 miles left. Hmm. That's pretty neat. And how many? And then off? if it's off, oh, 263 nice. miles, which is pretty pretty huh. nice. Sirius XM radio. What I like about this car too is that they still have buttons and everything is a little tactile still. Yeah, that's what I like. That's one thing that I think this has that maybe the Tesla didn't have is, or at least the Model 3, was it had the, not only the screens, but it has the dual screen. So you still get the instrument cluster mm -hmm. um, where they're trying to eliminate that in the competitor. And also the, uh, you do get some manual knobs down here, which I thought... Kind, I like that. They're kind of redundant, but I thought it was kind of nice. I do like having a volume knob and a couple of buttons. So yeah, in my I mean, opinion, these are touch sensitive, but uh, these are all like you know tactile buttons. Right. I mean, some people might differ, but I I, I kind of like that feature. No, I like that. I mean, I I, I was looking at a uh, Porsche. I don't even remember the name of it. It was one of their newer electric vehicles, which is in the two hundred thousand dollar range, uh, which is well beyond four times the amount of this car. And it had nothing. There was nothing in it. It was so sterile. That That's like the one thing about electric cars that I'm having a little bit of a tough time with is they need to make the interiors a little bit warmer, mm -hmm. a little bit more like normal cars, you know, and just kind of like make the, the person feel like they're in yeah, a normal vehicle true. and transition. If you're going to make a change, you want to make it as comfortable as possible. And, you're, and I think this might be the strategy that they were taking, at least right. Hyundai was taking, is that have... Why, why would you eliminate everything and make it totally different where you're going to have people have a hard time with that? Yeah, I agree. I think they should make it as user-friendly and as, as equivalent to a normal vehicle that, that we're driving today. And, uh, and just don't go way overboard. And I think this car does an excellent job of mixing that. Um, here's a stock for if you want to put it in drive, reverse, neutral. Um, here, let me put it in reverse and you can see the... Uh, backup camera yeah. which is really nice First it looks thing like I a high the definition. backup camera is really really well well lit and it's mm -hmm. large you can see quite a yeah quite you can see well. everything and I think if I remember correctly this has yeah you could oh, you could check out the back it. rear camera um, there's another mode here that I'm trying to remember which one it is no maybe that's it Okay, for some reason I thought this had top down. I thought it did, mode. you know, might have too, but I don't but maybe see, not. I'm not sure how to get to that, but All right, but that's really nice. You know, I like the way that looks. It's it's crisp. It's And, and the park button is right here. And all you got to do is just press that button to get to oh, put it in park. Oh, okay. This brings oh, you, oh, okay. a, see this is a redundant button. It gets you to camera mode automatically without without putting without, it in reverse. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that that's nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's check out the interior or the exterior real let's quick. Let's do that. So here's the exterior of of the Ionic 5, the 2002 Ionic 5. Now this, and this is a perfect backdrop, by the way. This is these are all. This is a solar farm. This is an enormous solar farm, and hopefully we're okay with videotaping that. But this car right here is called. This exterior color is called Shooting Star, which I really think is really neat. It's cool nice color like a matte finish yeah i'm not a huge fan of these types of door knobs i really don't like them that much i don't know how much how much more aerodynamics you're going to get out of that i you know I, I again that's like one of those things it seems like every electric car has to have right. that type of doorknob i don't know why but that seems to be the thing so uh for me i like i really like the lighting and i don't know if we could turn this yeah, lighting we on could turn on the uh, yeah that's pretty ingenious that's that's really cool really nice looking LEDs this entire lip right here is an LED where at night that's gonna light up um, down here these are actually uh, electronic they open and close based on the need for air 
but I really like the the design and that's the one thing I really care like about is is um, the, when they spend the the time to actually like do something with the lighting and make it a little bit more modern I feel like in this day and age it needs to be a little bit more modern um, it, yeah the backup brakes are bright they're like that pixel look which I think is really cool yeah, I like that a lot That was easy. That's really cool. Hazards. What do the blinkers look like? They're cool. Let's see how the horn sounds. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Should we pop Act, the hood? Or? Yeah, let's pop the hood and see what's in the front. This is another styling cue I thought was interesting. You know, the side skirt here around the wheels, you know, it's no, got it's like some sort bad. of like etched look. Slot, but it's actually not. Just no. Like a, like a, Just a little reveal. Yeah. Let's see if I can help there with that. All right, so it's got hydraulic. Uh, Piston actuated uh, hood lift, so we don't have to hold it up. With yeah, that's rocks. nice. It looks like. So what the heck is underneath there? Yeah, oh. It's like a small little. Uh, Just a little storage little container. I mean, you can't really. Yeah, I can't really put much in there. It's got a light in there too. That's pretty neat. Is it on? Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Windshield wiper fluid. Um, well, it looks like coolant for for your batteries and stuff like that. Wow, really interesting. It does look like it has a regular lead acid battery for the probably for the ignition system. Yeah, for accessories system. and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not let's check out the rear logo, but that thing, it looks good on this car actually. Yeah, I like the Hyundai logo on this. It really looks nice. So how does this open up? Gotta see if I can. Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh. there it goes. <laughs> automatic. This one's automatic. Look at nice. We, we didn't put this in here. I don't know what this is. Oh, oh that's a detailing box. It's oh. a company, Dr. Beasley's. They make very good products. <laughs> Why would that be in there? I have no Maybe they're looking at detailing this this car soon in the spring. Well, it looks like it has a charging cable over here. Mm hmm. That's really nice. This looks like 110. That's 110. Now he said that it takes about three days to charge this thing on 110. So I don't recommend that, that's for sure. Oh, this but, is the cargo net. It comes with a cargo net. Okay. And let's take a look. It looks like there's a little area. This might lift up under the and there's some more there's storage. A little, yeah. little more storage space, maybe a few inches underneath. Looks like you got a tire kit, so maybe this car doesn't have a spare tire. Mm -hmm. So instead, they give you a tire kit. Tire kit. Fix that. Mm -hmm. It's Velcroed down. I'll have to take a look at that. See what's inside. And they got really nice tires too. These are Michelin's. Uh, what brand? What, the prim Primacy All Seasons. Wow. Yeah. So that's they're nice wheels. Nice wheels and tires. They're pretty cool looking. Easy to clean, that's for sure. It's actually considering it's a big tire for an EV. This, these are, what are these? Two? Yeah, they're they're sizable. I think they're 235s, 235, if I remember correctly. 55. Yeah. 55s, yep. Really neat. Automatic uh, closure on that. It's pretty neat. And this is the all-wheel drive, what they call the H-Track, right? Is that their H-Track? That's, yep. That's the four-wheel drive system. It's not bad. It's a nice looking car. Let's take it for a little bit of a spin. What do you think, Dave? Yeah. All right, so we're going to give everyone a uh, POV view. Let's see if we can get this thing into drive. I'm 
Maybe not. <laughs> Alright, how do we do this now? You have your foot on the brake? Yep. I think you gotta go the other way. There, there we go. Okay, we didn't start it yet. <laughs> so it's hard to tell. Okay, one thing we've noticed is that uh, you have to start the car to actually put it in drive, but we don't realize it wasn't actually started yet because it's electric. You can't even tell. You can't I mean, tell. No it's it's, it's, it's really it. strange, actually. That is really strange. So we had to, even though the H HVAC system was appeared to be running, so we thought it was on, but it wasn't apparently. We had to press the start button again. Now, this is super quiet. I mean, there's like absolutely no sound in this cabin. It's very quiet. Yeah, I would agree. It's a nice ride. It's very smooth. Yeah, I like it. When we get onto the highway down here, I'll try to open it up a little bit. It's it's currently in it's sport mode, and there's like multiple modes. You can put it in eco mode, which gives you a little bit more of a range. Um, actually, press the uh, EV. Oh, EV? Yeah, let's see okay. what the range is. So, 231 to 270 miles in, e in eco mode. If I change it to normal mode, I'm down to 224 to 262. And if I'm in sport mode, 217 to 254 on a battery that's got 91% charge. So, I'm going to leave it in sport mode and let's see how this thing feels when we turn it. Turn left here at the intersection. And this is the all-wheel drive version of the car. That's all they have in stock right now. I think there wasn't a two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive car that was available that was sold. Wow, this thing really pulls. Holy mackerel. How does a regenerative braking feel? I don't even notice it. Oh, I honestly okay. don't even notice it. I know there's different levels of it. This is level one. And this what? is level oh, okay. two. Okay, so you could feel a little bit more resistance right here in the gotcha. Right here it says level three. And as you bump it up, this is eye pedal mode, so I, I don't need to technically press the brakes when I let go of the uh, the gas pedal. Um, but I don't like that right now. I'm gonna go back to level two. And all you do is you feel a little bit more resistance when you're driving. So when you actually let go of the, the, the um, throttle, you feel it like stopping. And, and when you feel it stopping, it's regenerating and, and providing electricity to the, uh, to the battery. I kind of like it in level zero, to be quite honest. Check out the seats, the leather of the seats, Dave. I mean, it's really, the quality is really yeah, nice. It, it, I got to tell you, the fit and finish is, is, is surprising. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, like you were, you were mentioned earlier that, uh, that you, you saw rust on the, on the Hyundais back, back <laughs> in the eighties. In the eighties. Uh, and I remember going to a dealer, a brand new car dealer, Hyundai dealer, and right on the, on the lot, brand new Hyundais had rusting parts on it, rusting wiper, windshield wiper arms. Woo! Oh, oh, he just gunned holy it. Holy mackerel. Well, it feels like you're on a roller coaster ride. One of oh, those. That's fantastic. It really has a good push uh, when you accelerate, but uh, but they've come a long way. Yeah, they, they, I remember seeing rusting parts right on the showroom floor. And in 40 years, they've gone from like low man on the totem pole to, I mean, literally ahead of everybody in terms of quality control. I mean, the yeah. fit and finish of this car. Uh, everything about it is just really nice. Smaller glove box. I would say that's a smaller one in comparison to some, to some other cars now. Right. Um, maybe average. Yeah, it's it's pretty deep. It, it looks like it, it has a whole license plate bracket in there, so I would say oh, that it's wow. pretty yeah. deep. Definitely. But um, it's, shallow. it's a narrow, but it's deep. But it's a little deeper. Yeah. It has some nice features on it. This one looks like it has lighting around the speakers and some design features I like the uh, the red stitching red uh, stitching yeah, here on the door sportier and there's some on the dashboard too and it looks like it has some might be tweeters here on the dashboard? it feels like a soft plastic soft plastic okay 
but it's it's good for it if you hit your head. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you're not hitting your head against <laughs> that thing. If you get into an accident, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. I like this car. I really so do. You, do. You think it would be something you would consider? I buying? would definitely consider it. I mean, it's still up there in the price range, but honestly, it's it's a nice, nice. Well, it doesn't feel like an electric vehicle. Um, I mean, it kind of feels like a normal vehicle. Here somewhere. It does feel really, really comfortable, and I'm in park mode. So it's it's absolutely something I would consider. Um, I 100% agree with all of the other reviewers that I saw online. I mean, the quality, the fit, the finish, the leather itself, um, the size, the comfort like sitting in this thing. It's just, they really yeah. went above and beyond. I think they did an excellent job. Honestly, I mean, some people are calling this a Tesla killer. I don't know about that. You know, I think they're two different leagues, <laughs> but I think this is definitely gonna give it a, a run for its money. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, you're talking a $50,000 yeah. car minus any rebates that right. you get. So you're in right. the 30s, you know, maybe 30, 40,000 right. something dollar range. I would say 40 something. Right, because the starting right. point is 45. Yeah, right? it starts in the 40s, so that with the rebate, you could very well easily be in the 30s easily. And, if and, you get with the standard, the standard. Yeah, one, right? and some it's states offer no right. tax or tax exemption. So I, right there, that I mean, that's that's a game changer. I think. Yeah, I agree. If, I mean, for 30, I, let's say 40 grand or even 45 thousand dollars, you're getting one hell of a car. I think if they. If the charging network is as good as the Teslas, or if not better, then that, that definitely that that could be a serious competition. But yeah, well, I guess I we'll. Think so. so yeah, so. very good, cool. All right, Dave. So we're done checking the Hyundai Ionic Five out, and uh, I don't know. I got to tell you, I think I think that's probably the first Hyundai that I would actually consider buying. I really I really like that car. I agree. I, I mean, I'm not really, you know, Hyundai's not really, wasn't always on my list. I mean, due to quality issues in the past, it wasn't really on my list. But I got to tell you that, especially given the price range, you know, they're still eligible for the federal rebate. And in New Jersey, they have tax, you know, sales tax exemption. Right. So there's um, no sales tax on this car. And you get a $7,500 rebate, federal rebate. Under taxes, yes. On your, through your taxes, exactly. You do that through the federal government. And so a $50,000 car now becomes 40, $43,000. $43, I mean, potentially. No tax. If you get the entry level model, potentially in the 30s, you could get this yeah. car. And, and, and that's with a 77.4 kilowatt battery that gets up to 303 miles with the rear wheel drive model. That's, that's not impressive. a bad deal. Yeah, it's, yeah, I like it. I mean, the fit and finish, I was really impressed with that. Um, it was super quiet when we drove it. Um, the interior was really comfortable. It was nice. It, was, it wasn't as sterile as I thought it was going to be based on the photos. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of felt very comfortable in there. I, I would like a darker color. I don't know why, like, a lot of EVs are coming out with white leathers and stuff like that. I think that's just silly as you know, I detail a lot of cars and I just think that would be like a lot of work. You know, your blue jeans are gonna, you know, the stain, stain the white uh, seating and all that kind of stuff. So I'd rather just go with like a darker color, um, you know, maybe yeah. a gray or something like that. So, but other, I, other than that. Yeah, I mean, one thing to note is that we noticed some things like for like this car does not have a spare tire, but it does have a tire mobility kit which means that if you have a flat tire it'll it's I think it's something along the lines of a fix a flat it has a can in there right. with an air pump but there's and that's if that's if you just get a small leak but I don't if, if you get something more than that you probably have to use roadside assistance but yeah there is no spare that tire. is really weird that there's no spare tire but I guess um, you know triple a you know, <laughs> if, yeah. or or have a friend uh, pick you up or, or replace the tire that way. I don't know. It's just it's just odd to me that it doesn't have a spare. Or at minimum, what they should be doing is putting four run flat tires on the car. I think that would be the right way thing to do. But then you you sacrifice a little bit of your comfort, right? It won't be as smooth, you know, because the run flats do run a little harder. But um, 
yeah, I don't know. That's definitely something I would consider, run flats. Uh, other than that, oh, the one thing that we're looking back, the the car when we wanted to dr put it in drive and we were having a tough time putting it in drive, mm -hmm. it was because it wasn't in ready mode. So there can it was an accessory mode. So the fan was running, the instrumentation was on, everything was on, and the only difference was that it doesn't say ready. Mm -hmm. And if you press the start stop button one more time, it puts it in ready mode, and then you could put it in the drive mode. So that was a little confusing. But I guess once you start driving that car a lot and you get used to that, that you know, you get into that habit and you'll know what to look for. But uh, yeah, overall. I think final thoughts. I think that's a great car. I would recommend it. I, if you're looking for an EV and uh, you're not sure what to buy, I definitely say consider looking at this one because this is definitely good quality car, uh, nice ride, nice acceleration, nice options. I mean, there are some perks that maybe you can't get on other cars. And, what, and then one more thing, the warranty. Right. It's a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty on this electric vehicle. Yep. I, I, th I think that's amazing. Right? Yeah, it had 10 year on, I believe it was 10 year, 100,000, not only on the battery, but on the powertrain. On so, the drivetrain too. So basically too. your battery, your electrics, your motor, it's all covered. So if you're worried about that, you're good for 10 year, 100,000 mile at least, unless you get an extended warranty, which might extend that. Yeah, and I, I honestly don't know in 10 years what could go wrong with that car other than maybe the battery not functioning as well or efficiently as it did when you first bought it. Mm -hmm. But if there's nothing wrong with it, you can just continue driving it another five, 10 years. Right. I mean, if you had to replace the battery, I think that would be an expensive proposition. It would probably be, on my guess, I don't know exactly. We even asked the, the you know, Hyundai dealer, you know, if uh, they knew how much a new battery pack would be. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it could range, who knows, you know, $15,000, $18,000, But if you really think about it, even at that point, after 10 years, you replace a $15,000 battery, you basically have a brand new car again. As long as you treat the interior and exterior correctly and you maintain it, you're mm -hmm. good to go. Right. So I don't know. I mean, it's just something to consider. It's definitely going to benefit the people that drive less miles locally. I mean, it's, right. you're, yeah, there's no question about it. They're going to have a good warranty that's going to last a long time and, and probably the battery will probably last them a long time. And the one thing that I have is obviously the uh, the battery anxiety, like, you know, just not knowing where the, where you're gonna be able to charge your battery next, but it had a really intuitive uh, mapping system uh, in the console, in the instrument cluster, uh, where you just basically, you identify where you wanna go within so many miles, mm -hmm. and it, it just draws up an entire list of different charging stations where you can go. So I, I was pretty impressed with that. You know, that definitely allevi alleviated some of that uh, um, distance anxiety, you know, like, you know, uh, whether or not you, you're able to charge. I think the Walmarts have charging stations now. Right. And there's a Walmart basically in every town. And it seems like some of them are fast chargers. So you, you don't yeah. have to be there for hours. You, you're, you're talking like maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour max. Plug it in, go inside, get what, what you need, come back out and your car is charged, you know, or, or somewhat charged, even if it was 50% charged. It, It'll get you home. So anyway, we'll end it on that. I appreciate everyone uh, listening to this. Uh, this is going to be something new. Uh, my brother and I might look at a couple other new cars um, and, and you know, give us, a, a, you know, an honest review. But, uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, share this channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.